Creating dialogue VIs is a nice easy way to get a lot of necessary settings that aren't commonly used in your main application off the main screen and into a dedicated screen that's just used for the settings. So you see here I've created uh, such a dialogue VI. Uh, in terms of my front panel I have a number of options over here that I'd like the user to be able to, to set and configure. You'll notice how I group them into like sections uh, using familiar icons from my main front panel. And you'll also see over here I have a, a cluster of, of the actual data of those settings and also the error clusters. So if I cancel that, I'll show you the block diagram quickly. It's a, it's a very simple VI where I allow the settings passed in, I populate the values before I show them to the user, and then I wait for the user to either click OK, in which case I read the controls and pass those out, or if the user selects cancel, I ignore whatever input they've made and merely propagate the error the original settings. Again, there's nothing in here that could cause an error, so the errors are just wired through. It's good practice to still include the error cluster just in case in future we wanted to generate an error from the sub-VI, and it also allows for the top-level VI to be wired through correctly. So what I'll do is actually I, I have all the settings here for the connector pane, so I can connect things through, which I'll do here. switch back to show icon, and I actually don't want the user to be able to see any of these kind of internal, so I'll just resize my window to hide those. And then turning this from a regular sub-VI into something that's more easily used as a dialog is quite easy. If we go to File and VI Properties, there's a couple of settings we'd want to change. First one is Window Appearance. You'll see there is a dialog preset here. Now selecting that gives us a set of settings commonly used for dialogues in that they have no menu bar, they have no toolbar, and the, in, the most interesting one is show front panel when cold, which basically means when you use this VI as a sub-VI, if the front panel isn't open, it will open uh, and present itself to the user, allowing the user to make any changes, and then once the sub-VI is done running, it will close itself. Uh, that's the option set here. Also note that this window is set to be modal, which means it will appear on top of any other LabVIEW screens, which is what we want in this case. So I'll hit OK there. Another thing I like to change on my uh, pop-up dialogues is the runtime position. Uh, by default this will be unchanged, so wherever you last put it will be where it opens. I actually want it to show up centered on the primary monitor, so it's going to remain the same size as it is currently, and it'll always show up in the middle of the primary monitor, which is uh, chances are where your user is looking and where they'd expect it. And then one other change I'll make back on this window appearance, um, the window title, I don't want it to be dialog.vi, I want it to be settings, because that's what this window actually does, and then I'll give it some context by calling it sine wave tester, so we know what the owning application is. So I'll hit OK on both of those, and then you'll see when I run this, I get a nice looking dialog screen, and when I hit OK, it stops running. Likewise, if I hit cancel, it would also stop running. Um, and then when this gets called from another VI, which we can easily do by just creating a new blank VI here, I'll actually just close the block diagram, or no, just look at the block diagram. We'll drag our settings in, and then I'll close my this VI. So you see I'm just calling dialog, I have settings in, settings out, and whenever we call this VI, our settings dialog will appear as a pop-up, allowing the user to change whatever values they need to here, and upon clicking OK, those new values will be available to the owning block diagram. So this is a very clean way and a very familiar way for users to interact with the program, and for you as a developer, it's a powerful technique for simplifying that top-level user interface.